Chapter 2. Clashing with Dominance. God dominates the universe, he also rules the church's foundation, just as leaders who have dominion over others. However, religion ought not to be amplified above God nor the universe. Having dominion gives you the control to guide and rule over an empire, group, or nation as a head authority figure. Governing priorities making decisions will impact the common interest of the relationship. Building a strong team, forming mutual agreements, granting and limiting access, planning goals, while taking care of responsibilities, etc. The lion dominates in the jungle, just as leaders do in business, career status, communications, corporate, government, job title, home, politically, relational, socially, etc. The leader guides and governs with superiority exerting authority and influence, while making compromisable deals and ruling over others, granting and limiting access. At any expense, the person feels more important than others in a higher status. When domination is acquired by aggression, it doesn't necessarily mean you have the proper contract or documentation to dominate as an authority. If this is the case, it may be done in violation of business laws, which can lead to clashes with involved parties. To clash shows a conflict opposition, especially of interest or views that can result in a battle, fight, or skirmish. In which, the clash can appear offensive to the eye. Most conflicts today surround authoritarian parents, class status, corporate ladder status, foreign and U.S. agreements, foreign and U.S. affairs, illegal business, hemisphere icons, marital gender, money laundering, politics, religion, sexual assaults, subracism, terrorist attacks, workplace disputes, etc. Practically every area of a person's life surrounds domination. Everyday people often take dominance to another level, when they pretend to have dominion over others ruling them a subordinate in their everyday life, the word dominate has lost its vibe. Although the goal is not to escalate confrontations, lawlessness rules on any class status making it difficult to establish common grounds. Paul wrote, in 2 Timothy 3,1-5 This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-mindedly, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. A true foundation. The church is characterized as the predominant foundation and house of God that provides moral guidance and spiritual intellect with natural affection. One is to apply themselves to devotion and the word of the Bible while keeping all commandments to distinguish false and true discernment. From this union, one is capable of controlling one's estate, make deals, and peace agreements to help build up the foundation. Also, one is capable of handling current affairs and matters. Because one inherits the ability to think wise and review all sides of a story before making the decision. In which, you don't lean onto your understanding of self-righteousness. Although certain people such as children, disable, handicap and the elderly are exempt from handling their responsibilities, it isn't wise to take advantage of them. What is the difference between God's wisdom and worldly wisdom? God's wisdom has biblical meanings and the world's wisdom has all other meanings. Dominion over a foundation. Consist of territorial control over domains, empires, governments, lands, and nations within. In which any are subject to control, rules, sovereignty, or complete domination. It forms mutual agreements and loyalty. Domination. Consist of arbitrary control over a group, individual, relationship affair of matters, or individual control. It doesn't necessarily form mutual agreements or loyalty. Subordinate. Consist of belonging to a lower order or rank. Secondary, dependent, and subject to the superior authority, and it can be a person or thing. Under dominion as a subordinate submission is commanded, and under domination, the submission may not be expected or required. While the dominion control operates off subordinates keeping mutual agreements and loyalty. The domination control can be everyday people who may or may not have an agenda and mutual agreements may or may not be of concern. Dominating with natural affection. Maybe natural affection has lost its vibe. But, let's just be clear, dominant status doesn't mean you get there to have malicious intent. You acquire a higher status through education, hard work, and determination. Afterward, you create a strong foundation for family and friends. Dominating with mutual agreements and loyalty means having a righteous conversation and handling financial obligations responsibly. Avoid serving two masters and the flesh, to form long-term mutual agreements and loyalty with involving parties. In which, you value the relationships because they have sentimental value, and do it gracefully and humbly. Egalitarianism. Belief in the equality of all people, especially in economic, political, and social life. Mutual agreement. A mutual agreement is something shared by two or more parties. A mutual agreement or contract binds the two or more entities. 
in which, each party agrees to take or not take, certain actions. The terms of the agreement are to be acceptable to both or all parties. A mutual agreement often involves monetary compensation in modern law. A reasonable person would agree that both of these circumstances constitute mutual agreements, but the other reasonable person might not agree there was a mutual agreement if no specific amount of compensation was set. This is a critical component in enforcement. Parties in the relationship express actions, concerns, and principles, and form consequences the other will face once either party's trust has been betrayed. All parties are to be in support of peaceful agreements. Elements of a contract. Negotiation between the parties to each provide something of acceptable value. An agreement, either oral or written, and sometimes referred to as an offer and acceptance. Performance. Both parties agree to do something, or either can take legal action to enforce the agreement if the other fails to perform. The terms of the agreement can't be illegal. Legal age and sound mind. All parties to a contract must be capable of agreement and able to perform as promised, and minors can't enter into contracts. Both parties must be of legal age and sound mind. A mutual agreement relationship isn't legal or binding upon the parties unless all these factors exist. Enforcement of a mutual agreement. Mutual agreement forms a basis for contract enforcement because both parties believe they're entering into a bona fide exchange. Either can therefore take the matter to civil court for enforcement if the other party doesn't perform as agreed. But enforcement additionally requires that a reasonable person would presume an arrangement is a mutual contract under the given circumstances, and this is the standard a court uses. Violation of a mutual agreement, remedies. Two common remedies exist for violation or breach of a mutual contract, a court can order monetary damages of the party who failed to perform. In which, the party must compensate the other party financially, or the court can order the violating party to perform as they said they would under the terms of the contract. Verbal agreements can be enforced just as written agreements can, but it is easier to enforce a written agreement. The agreed upon terms are outlined in black and white and are not open to he said, she said interpretation. Loyalty. Under the quality or state of being loyal, faithfulness to commitments or obligations. Faithful enough to adhere to the cause, government, leader, sovereign, etc. The basis or groundwork of anything such as the lower division. What does it mean to prove loyalty? To demonstrate faithfulness to commitments or obligations made. Why do people take loyalty for granted? Most people be wanting to appear diverse and liberal to earn self-gratification rewards when trusting the ungodly. However, Jesus doesn't force you to earn self-gratification rewards for his trust. All he asks is to believe in him while being obedient to his commands. Loyalty supporting diversity. Nowadays many people support diversity but aren't loyal enough to be diverse. As the world becomes more aggressive towards ourselves and others, we lack sentimental thoughts. Almost every product created false or misleading expressions are factored into rendering huge profits. America represents a variety of cultures, others must see your loyalty to prove your diversity. When subordinates have been victimized by dominant people, the clash of domination hardly ever gets reconciled, and all too often the lawlessness rules over righteousness. Once you factor in the false and misleading concepts reconciliation gets replaced with revenge. Although people deal with confusion and doubt in various ways, not all will respond in the same manner. God and loved ones are to come first, but as you see most people are pretending to have a righteous significant approach in their daily affairs, those top priorities get overlooked once revenge consumes their life. But, criminal and spiritual warfare is why the world relies heavily on religions that handle warfare gracefully and responsibly. Unlike cults, who rather go against biblical and sanity concerns when taking matters into their own hands. We all have a reason to feel dominant maybe to appear less defenseless, fearful, or weak. And sure, those are reasons so many people feel justified supporting lawlessness. Dignity and hope with loyalty ought not to be repeatedly devoured by evil spirits control. Proving loyalty is a part of believing in God, it shows you can be his faithful servant. Proving loyalty to loved ones means you will guide them through criminal and spiritual warfare of any kind. Bonds with family and friends are expected to be proven daily or weekly, but a friend can become an enemy in a matter of seconds. It sometimes takes years to forgive an enemy, unrequired communication often hinders long-term truce. Neither helps repair bonds between you and an enemy the animosity grows stronger, only forgiveness, love, joy, and mercy does. Leader Warfare It appears a lot of people are facing spiritual warfare. Although many leaders do righteous good works, too often the negative things they do outweigh the positives. The spiritual warfare leaders face and have faced for quite some time, means some are convoluted in areas others aren't. When leaders experience spiritual warfare, it affects them through various levels of emotions like anger, doubt, envy, fear, rage, strife, and often revenge just as it does others. Essential Warfare List of Leaders 1. Affairs of Matters Many leaders support going to war in various countries which makes other countries hate ours. This usually leads to loyalty, mutual, peace, and trade agreement issues, etc. 
2. Donation of resources, many leaders donate or help in local communities where kids suffer most. Some leaders often try to be a parent to some of those kids, when they probably should focus on leading a firm foundation. 3. Fraud investments, many leaders invest money in Ponzi schemes, to later find out they have gotten ripped off. This may prevent them from paying bills on time. 4. Greed, many leaders form greed in various areas of their life. They may defraud the system while spending excessively, cheat on a spouse outside the marriage, or sexually assault someone while on the job. When family and friends are affected it can create chaos, and this too can create problems on the job. 5. High prices, many leaders support raising taxes while valuing higher salary raises. Salary raises affect inflation, and it creates a huge conflict of interest when determining the sole base for raising taxes. 6. Hindrance, many leaders help create laws that hinder the poor from getting ahead. Some poor people may break laws and ordinances that lead to more entanglements such as less freedom, loss of assistance, businesses, education, employment, etc. If the poor can't achieve finances righteously, they will commit crimes that can endanger humanity and increase debt. This means our country has become less forgiving when the country ought to work toward getting out of debt to be financially stable. 7. Kickbacks, many leaders accept kickbacks on a normal basis, often to reverse dirty deeds. This can distort their reputation. 8. Lack of support, many leaders often are taken advantage of when their employees extort money from the business. This can make the company lose or need government support. Also, this can make the company owe a debt to the government that has to be paid back within a certain time frame or other penalties may apply. Lawlessness, serving too many masters. In business and relationships without dominion, evil spirits often dominate vainly serving the devil's flesh, and as you see they will go out the way to avoid forming a relationship with involving parties. Since the actions won't be justifiable by righteousness, the evil spirits need elaborate battlegrounds to complete their assignments, and this is when businesses are targeted and used. Usually, when a person dominates, they have a master who sets up battlegrounds that will be used to carry out maliciousness, they also have to give them a report of their criminal activities. Otherwise, evil spirits commit their crimes out in the open space. And sure, they often force subordinates into signing illegal documents, pretending to have dominion over a foundation where they force demands and have rules and regulations. All of which is nothing more than acts of lawlessness, and if confronted there will be clashes of disagreements. Not only do the subordinates serve the dominant person, they too serve his master and all while serving God. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. Matthew 6:24. this means you don't review one side of a story to fit plans of becoming successful. False discernment leads to financial losses and taking kickbacks pretending there was an agreement. Conclusion and Summary When a person owns a foundation they operate having dominion over it and dominate immensely. When everyday people dominate, if the person doesn't have a relationship with involving parties or form a binding contract, the domination is formed without loyalty or mutual agreements. Without a relationship and binding contract, the person who dominates cannot form or keep peaceful agreements. Either way as a subordinate, being under domination there will be demands, but the person would benefit more being under dominion since they are expected to keep mutual agreements and loyalty with submission. Before the year 2000 people were more tolerant of mutual agreements and loyalty to avoid the consequences of betraying the other party's guidance and trust. Nowadays you can't be sure a person is for equality or self, there are fewer common grounds, with higher demands that are unbearable to live by. Too many people are dominating, ruling over others' affairs with force, and no peace agreements of any kind. However, you must be able to distinguish between real danger and empty threats to form mutual agreements and loyalty. All this is criminal and spiritual warfare that needs to be addressed by people for equality, not just self-preservation. Otherwise, nations will rise and clash continuously. Some leaders live a life full of abundance, and God hardly ever gets the glory of the wealth. They too fear nothing, and when the unjust leaders fear no one, others suffer for choices they make. It is time to reprove the wrong and make it right on both sides of the parties this effect, to forgive. Jesus said in a parable in Luke 18 1-8 that men ought always to pray, and not faint, saying, there was in a city a judge. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he beard long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily.